Hi everyone, I'm John from ProJK Labs and this is session number three, part modeling. This video will teach you how to create a 3D model and sketching in ANSYS Workbench. So let's get started. Introduction to part modeling. For conducting an FEA analysis, a part model is mandatory. In ANSYS Workbench, the next step after defining the material properties is to define the geometry to which the material properties will be applied. Before you start part modeling in ANSYS, you need to understand the design modeler window in ANSYS Workbench. So let's start. Thanks John for explaining importance of modeling. Now, before we get into design modeler window, let us launch ANSYS Workbench and then add an analysis system to the project schematic window. Now, click on the OK button to close the Getting Started window. You can see in Toolbox window, some systems are expanded by default. To avoid confusion, we'll minimize the system windows which are in expanded state by default. Now, we need to expand the component system alone and double click or drag and drop the geometry option into project schematic window. The geometry component system is added and displayed in the project schematic window. If you want to rename the system, click on top downwards arrow. A shortcut window appears, choose the rename option and enter the new name. In any system, the design modeler window is associated with a geometry cell. The geometry cell can be added to any analysis project as a standalone component system or as a part of any mechanical analysis system. Let me explain this with the help of an example. System A is a standalone component system. In system B, the standalone system A is used as a part of an analysis system. In order to use the same geometry in System B, we need to drag the geometry of System A and drop it into Static Structural Analysis System B. After completing the session, you will be able to understand the Design Modeler workspace, draw sketches, convert sketches into 3D models, apply constraints and relations, creating new sketching plane. Let's get started. Introduction to Design Modeler window. In ANSYS Workbench, the part models and their sketches are defined in the Design Modeler window. You can define part models either by importing the CAD model created in some CAD applications such as Pro-E, SOLIDWORKS, and so on, or by creating the model in the Design Modeler window of ANSYS Workbench. Now, to open the Design Modeler window, double-click on Geometry Cell, which is showing question mark. Double-click and allow some time to display the Design Modeler window. In the ANSYS Workbench dialog box, select Millimeter Radio button and accept the default settings for other checkboxes. Next, choose OK button to close the dialog box. Tree Outline In ANSYS Workbench, three default planes, XY plane, YZ plane and ZX plane corresponding to the XY, YZ and ZX planes of Cartesian coordinate system are created by default and are displayed in the tree outline. These planes are used as sketching planes to create the sketches and generating the part model. Now we are going to create a model by using this drawing. Here you will learn to do sketching, creating datum plane, adding material using extrude tool, and removing material using extrude tool. So let's get started. The plane for creating the sketch can be specified by selecting it from the tree outline. 
when you click on a plane in the tree outline, it is displayed in the graphics window. The last sketching plane you worked on will act as the active plane for any future operation unless and until you change the plane by selecting it from the tree outline. The sketching mode is used to draw 2D sketches. Later on, these sketches can be converted into 3D models using the modeling mode. To invoke the sketching mode, choose the sketching tab from the designer modeler window. The sketching mode displays the sketching toolboxes window which contains 5 toolboxes. These toolboxes are used to create, modify and dimension the sketches. By default, draw option will be displayed which contains all the tools required to create a sketch. After that, we have options related to modification, dimension and constraint of the sketch. The modeling mode is used to generate the part model using the sketches drawn in the sketching mode. By default, the modeling mode is active when the design modeler window is invoked. If not, choose the modeling tab from the design modeler window. In the modeling mode, the tree outline is displayed on the left of the graphics window which contains three default planes. Apart from three default planes, the list of all operations that are used to create a model in the modeling mode will be listed in the tree outline in the sequence they are performed. The above highlighted portion is the toolbar. And it includes various icons for different functionalities as displayed here one by one. In the left side, we have major modeling tools like extrude, revolve, sweep, skin or loft and point. After creating any feature like sketch, mesh modeling, we need to click on generate button. You can create new plane by selecting new plane icon. This is details view window. This window is contextual in nature and changes its contents according to the selection made in the tree outline. As a next step, we'll create a sketch. Sketch is required to create a model. Select XY sketching plane.
choose the Look At tool from the standard toolbar. Click on the Sketching tab. Choose the Rectangle tool from the Draw toolbox. Then, click anywhere in the graphics window to specify the start point. You will be promoted to specify the end point of the rectangle. Next, click to specify the end point of the rectangle. A rectangle will be created. Similarly, select a circle from the Draw Toolbox. Click on your desired location and draw a circle. The symbol of radius R is displayed along with cursor. It's asking you that you need same diameter circle which you have drawn before. If yes, then click on that position once R symbol appears. Next, we'll expand the Constraints Toolbox in the Sketching Toolboxes window to apply constraints to the sketch. Then, choose the Symmetry tool from the Constraints Toolbox. First, select center line. Then, select both edges of the rectangle one by one. Select Escape button from your keyboard to exit from symmetry. Again, select Symmetry tool. Then, first, select horizontal center line and select both the horizontal edges of rectangle. Press Escape button. Again select Symmetry tool. Select vertical center line and then select center points of both the holes. Oh, we have missed to mention the circle dimension. Select Circle tool under the Dimensions toolbox. Then, select Circle Edge to define the dimension. Edit the Circle dimension in the Detail view window. Now, we need to add fillet to the sketch. To do so, choose the Modify tool from the Sketching Toolbox window. Choose the Fillet tool and enter the Fillet value in the Fillet Edit box. To obtain the fillet, select Vertical and Horizontal lines in Rectangle. Now, we need to add chamfer for remaining edges to do so. Choose the chamfer tool. To obtain the chamfer, select vertical and horizontal lines in rectangle. Now chamfer and radius are added to the sketch. Next step is to create extrude feature out of this sketch. To do so, we need to convert the sketch into the base feature by using extrude tool. 
the extrude tool is used to add or remove material from the specified sketch. Choose the extrude tool from the features toolbar. The preview of the extruded feature with default values is displayed in the detail view window. To rotate the model, click on the ISO ball or hold the center button of the mouse and rotate. For better display, right click on the sketch and hide the sketch. Now, you need to specify the depth of material addition. Go to details view window, select FD1, depth edit box and enter the new dimension. Then press enter. Now, we need to select the direction of the extrude. Here you can see different types of direction and how does it works. In both symmetry options, the material will be equally divided about the center line. The both asymmetry option is used to add material on both the sides of sketch with different values of the depth of material addition. Set the direction to normal. You can see the yellow thunderbolt is attached to the extrude 1 in the tree outline. This indicates that the part is not generated yet. Choose the Generate tool from the Features toolbar. The Thunderbolt symbol is changed to green tick mark indicating that the feature is updated. Extrude 1 is added in the tree outline and sketch is created under XY plane. Next, we need to create new datum plane. Choose the new plane icon from the toolbar menu. Now, we need to assign the face where the new datum plane is going to be created. Select the From Face option from the Type drop-down list in the Detail view window. Then, click on yellow highlighted, not selected option. On this face, we are going to create a new plane, right face of the model. Select apply button. The new datum plane is added in the tree outline. Still, it is not generated yet. Now, choose the Generate option from the standard toolbar. The new datum plane 4 is created. Next, we need to create second feature by using datum 4. To create a new feature, first we need to assign the sketching plane. Select Plane 4 as a sketching plane in the tree outline. Next, select the Look at tool from the standard toolbar. Now, choose the Sketching tab. From the Draw toolbox, choose the Oval tool. 
draw an oval on right face. We are not specifying the dimensions for the oval in the sketch. Next, choose the extrude tool from the standard toolbar. Now, click on apply button in the detail view window. In geometry, sketch 2 is applied. Select the cut material option from the operation drop down list in the details view window. Next, scroll down the details view window and enter the dimension 10 mm in the FD1 depth edit box. In extend type drop down list, there are some more options to cut the feature. Next, to complete the process of material removal, Choose the Generate tool from the Features toolbar. The cutout feature is created. In the tree outline, three features are created. Extrude 1, Extrude 2 and Plane 4. Right click on graphics window and choose the view option from the shortcut menu displayed and select desired view from shortcut window. To display ISO view, choose ISO icon from the standard toolbar or click on the ISO ball. Hide the datum. Choose the save button from the standard toolbar to save the project. Close the workbench window to close the ANSYS workbench session. After creating the 3D model, you need to save the file before you exit the ANSYS workbench session. If you have any questions, you can find us on social media. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.